Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In the last set of videos, we looked at the pub sub pattern using RabbitMQ. This allowed us to send the same message to multiple different interested services or consumers. In this video, we're gonna look at different techniques for subscribing only to a subset of messages. And we're gonna do this first using the direct exchange, and then we're gonna look at the topic exchange. So in our previous video, we had a setup very similar to what we have on screen at the moment. We had a producer, which was pushing messages onto a fanout exchange. And that fanout exchange was then sending these messages to multiple different queues, which pushed them onto multiple different services. And the exchange just mindlessly pushed the messages onto any queue that was bound to the exchange. It didn't look at any sort of information about the message or anything like that and say we were pushing user messages in this instance and we have our kind of three services, our payment service, our analytics service, and our shop service. And we might want to amend this example slightly. So say the payment service only gets some messages around users that it's interested in, while analytics and shop get others, and maybe even some other messages are shared between two or more services. So how would we go about achieving this in RabbitMQ? So to achieve this, we would use a direct exchange instead of a fanout exchange. And a direct exchange gives us slightly more flexibility. The routing algorithm of a direct exchange uses things called binding keys and routing keys to smartly route the message just to the services or consumers that are interested in it. So if we remember from our previous example, we had to bind each of our queues to our exchange. And that is the same when using the direct exchange. So when adding a binding using the direct exchange, we can add an extra parameter called a binding key. So for instance, for the binding between the payments queue and the direct exchange, we might add a binding key called user payments. And for the shop queue, we might have a binding called user purchases. And we, for now, we'll just forget about the analytics service in that queue so we'll pretend that that binding doesn't currently exist so now when our producer is publishing messages to the direct exchange we can provide a routing key which tells the direct exchange how to route the message so if for instance we publish a message to the direct exchange using the routing key of user payments that message will only be directed to a binding that has the exact same binding key, in this case, user payments. So the message sent with the user payments routing key will only be sent to the payment service. So then if we produce a second message, and in this case, we add the routing key user purchases to the message, that will be then routed through to direct exchange and only to any binding with the same matching routing key. So in this case, the binding that binds the shop service to the direct exchange. And the real power from this method comes from the fact that multiple queues can be bound to the direct exchange using the same binding keys. And a single queue can also have multiple bindings. So in this case, say our analytics service is actually interested in both user payments messages and user purchases methods. We might add these two bindings between the direct exchange and the analytics service. And that way, the messages for user payments and the messages for user purchases will also be sent down to the analytics service as well as the payments in the case of the user payments and the purchases in the case of the user purchases. And we can see that this gives us great flexibility in how we route the messages throughout our system. So if we add additional services, we can bind them just to the messages they're interested in, even if other services are interested in those same messages. Another even more powerful way to route messages through our system can be achieved using the topic exchange. Messages sent to a topic exchange can't have an arbitrary routing key. It must be a list of words delimited by dots. The words can mean anything, but usually they have some meaning to the system or the message being sent. For example, a routing key in our system might be something like user.europe.payments. And this indicates that the message is relevant for the user entity or any service interested in the user entity for the region Europe and has something to do with maybe receiving or sending a payment. 
Using the Topic Exchange, we again use binding keys to bind our Topic Exchange to queues, and we pass messages onto the Topic Exchange using the routing key we just talked about here. So we might pass this user Europe payments message into the Topic Exchange. And currently there is no queue bound to the Topic Exchange that has a binding key that matches the routing key that we sent in the message. If we add a binding between the queue connected to the payment service and the Topic Exchange that matches the routing key user.europe.payments, that message will now flow onto the payment service. In this way, using a Topic Exchange works very similar to using a direct exchange. However, the real power of the topic exchange comes from using the special wildcard characters that are supported when adding binding keys. We can use the star character to substitute for exactly one word, or we can use the hash character, which can substitute for zero or more words. So say for example, we added another binding between the topic exchange and the analytics service. And in this case, the binding we're adding is user.europe.star. So this is basically saying, I want to receive any message that begins with user.europe and then ends in any one word. So in this case, payments will match that because user matches user, Europe matches Europe, and the star will match anything. So we will get the payments message here. If we then send a second message, with a new routing key onto the topic exchange from the producer, say in this case, user Europe purchases, how will this message get passed through the system? So the message will first go to our topic exchange and then the topic exchange will check for all the matching binding keys that match the routing key of the message. In this case, it won't match user Europe.payments because the payments and purchases does not match. But again, it will match this binding key here, user Europe star. So the message will be forwarded onto the queue that's connected to the analytics service. And the star does not need to appear at the end of the binding key. It can appear anywhere in the binding key. So for instance, if we add another binding key, which connects the shop queue to our topic exchange, and in this case, the binding key is star Europe purchases. What we are saying is we want to receive all messages that begin with something and then are dot Europe dot purchases. So basically, this might mean in the context of the system, any purchase that takes place in Europe, whether it's by a user or a business or anything. So this user your purchases message now, because it matches this here, will also get routed to the shop service. And then to finish up our example using the stars, if we added a third message with a different routing key, in this case, like we just discussed, business your purchases, how will this get routed? So as we expect, we first push it onto the topic exchange. Topic Exchange then looks up all matching binding keys. It can only find one, which is the third one here, star Europe purchases. So it routes the message to that queue, which then pushes it onto our shop service. And binding keys can have one or more stars. They're not limited to just using one. So say for instance, if we change the binding key to our analytics service from user Europe star to star Europe star. This would basically mean that this queue is interested in any message that has anything to do with Europe. So this will match all three of the messages we're currently sending onto the topic exchange. So again, this business.europe.purchases message sent with that routing key will now also be sent to the analytics queue. So we'll just clear out all the message flow here before we start to demonstrate how this works using the hash wildcard in a binding key. So remember the hash wildcard can substitute for zero or more words. So let's say we replace our shop service with a user service. So clearly this service is interested in any information regarding users. So we can add a binding key between the topic exchange and the queue connected to the user service to use the binding key user dot hash. And this is telling the topic exchange that this queue is interested in any message that begins with user and it doesn't matter what else comes after it, whether it's nothing, whether it's two dots, three dots, four dots, or anything up to the maximum of 255 bytes. So in our case, if we push it, all the three messages that we had in our previous example, business.europe.purchases, user.europe.purchases, user.europe.payments onto our topic exchange. The topic exchange will look at which ones of these match. And as we said, anyone that begins with user will match. 
So the red and the purple messages will both get forwarded to the user's queue and then onto the user's service. So we can see here that by using a topic exchange and its wildcards, star and hash, we can achieve really interesting flexibility in how we route and duplicate messages throughout our system. In the next two videos, we're gonna look at examples of how to practically achieve this using both Python and C-sharp. So feel free to stick around and look at the practical implementation for the language you're interested in. If you enjoy this video and want to learn more about RabbitMQ, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like the video.